a 101 facts about Australia. What can we learn today? Let's do it. We learning today. Yes, hope so. Hope so. Three, two, one. Good day, mother factors. Wait, that's kind of racist, isn't it? Oops, sorry. <laughs> Good evening, mother factors, and welcome to this Down Under edition of 101 Facts. I'm Sam, and today I'm here to talk about a country with quite a reputation of being stupendously beautiful, but also really bloody scary. Yes, it's Australia. But what creatures are truly the most dangerous in Australia? Can the trees there really <laughs> spontaneously explode? What? Can anybody get me cheaper tickets to go out there with? Because man, oh man, it's a pricey buy. I even consider United. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered. So pack your shrimps, barbies, lollies, corkscrew hats, boomerangs, didgeridoos, and all your other stereotypical items into a bag and make like Dorothy. Get it? Dorothy? Get it was? Oh, it doesn't matter. This is 101 <laughs> facts about Australia. Number one. So then, Australia, the big Oz, as nobody calls it. Where to begin? Well, Australia is the smallest inhabited continent of the world's pretty neat collection of seven, and is also considered the world's largest island at 7.6 million square kilometers. Number two. Good news for people who don't enjoy washing, social interaction, or a combination of the two, Australia is very, very spacious. The country has one of the lowest population densities in the world. In fact, there are three people for every square kilometer of land. Wow. Wow. Number three. I know what you're thinking. Sam, you daft pommy. Australia isn't even its proper name. And yes, you'd be right in saying that. The official name for the country, after all, is the Commonwealth of Australia. Huh. Number four. The last word of that name comes from the Latin terra australis, which isn't a plant that sounds like it'd give you a nasty rash on the bottom, but does mean southern land. Which is kind of true, really, given that it's the land at the south of the world, isn't it? Look, see? <laughs> south of the world. Number five. The country is split into eight states. Southern Australia, Western Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania, Northern Territory, Australian Capital Territory, and Queensland. Which is what the UK should be called, really, given it was named after the Queen Vic. Number six. Along with those states, Australia also has a nice collection of islands, too. They have the Partridgean Norfolk Island, the festive Christmas Island, the very good at listening and very tasty McDonald and Heard Islands, and the Cocos Keeling Islands. Nice. nice. Cool. Number seven. Now, I don't know about you, but I associate Australia with lovely warm baking weather, but it ain't all like that. In fact, the continent of Australia technically includes some of the Antarctic Territory. What? Oh. Number eight. Quick uh, pop quiz for you here. What is the capital of Australia? Well, well done to the guys who said the letter A. Hardy ha ha, very funny. But a big wrong to those who said <laughs> Sydney. It's actually Canberra, which is a whole 153 miles away from Sydney. Number nine. <coughs> other cities in Australia, or rather other cities people are likely to mistake for the capital, include Perth, Brisbane, Adelaide, and Melbourne. Number 10. If you live in Melbourne and want to die for some reason, well, good luck. Melbourne beat 140 other cities in the Economist's global livability ranking. <laughs> wow. Wait, that's not what livability means? Oh, okay. Well, anyway, it's had this title for a whopping six years in a row since 2011. Huh. Number 11. <laughs> I don't know. Any thoughts so far? Or are you just absorbing I'm this just, stuff? I'm just trying to absorb it, man. There's, yeah. there's there's about to be a lot of facts. Yeah, So yeah, I'm going to try to just keep strapped in and not lose focus. Yeah, yeah. The part about where there was three people for every square kilometer, that shocked me. It's right like there. Montana. A big version of Montana. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and now a question I have is like, is the southern part of Australia cold? Like, because it's near yeah. the Antarctic. I don't know, man. Maybe that'll get answered in here. Yeah. We'll see. The country's population is over 24 million Aussies. 380,000 of those people live in Canberra. There's also over 60 million kangaroos too. Not to be confused, by the way, with the local populace. They don't like that. Take from experience and a black eye. <laughs> Number 12. 61.1% of the population are Christian, 2.5% are Buddhist, 2.2% Muslim, and 1.3% Hindu. Not sure how many are Jedi or Grutist, though. What, Grutist? <laughs> oh yeah, that's the new religion now. Didn't you know? I am Groot. Number 13. The incredibly difficult to pronounce Mount Kossi Kosko is the highest mountain in Australia, standing at a whopping 7,310 feet. Number 14. Popular landmark that also sounds like an alien race, Uluru, is also known as Ayers Rock. 
It can be found standing around doing absolutely nothing right in the centre of the country. <laughs> and at 2,831 feet, or just over 470 Hugh Jackmans, it's the world's <laughs> largest rock. Oh, sorry, Stonehenge. I'm told it's not the size that matters anyway. Number 15. Just off the coast of Queensland in the Coral Sea is the Great Barrier Reef. The reason why it's so great is because it's the world's largest coral reef system and it's made up of over 2,900 different reefs. Number 16. The reef stretches over 2,300 kilometers and has probably appeared on your Facebook feed at least 21 times in the past decade, am I right? It's so massive it can be seen from space and is the biggest structure made by a living organism. Wow. <laughs> Except my... T Actually, no, I'm not going to make that joke. I'm a better man <laughs> than that. <laughs> Number 17. Even though the national language is English, over 200 different languages are spoken in the country, including Italian, Cantonese, Arabic, and Mandarin. Number 18. Australia has a vast and frankly at times deadly ecosystem, with many unique creatures and plants that don't appear anywhere else in the world, like rare Pokemon that only appeared in red and not blue. I mean, that was <laughs> irritating, wasn't it? Anyway, oh, yeah. these include wombats, dingoes, kangaroos, koalas, platypus, and wallabies. Number 19. Kangaroos can be eaten. Yeah, sorry, Joey. It's actually considered a leaner and healthier alternative to beef and lamb. Tasty. Number 20. As well as kangaroo meat being available over the counter, you can also get crocodile meat and emu. And from the sounds of the next fact coming up, it's not the crocodiles getting revenge you should be scared of. Number 21. Emus must be quite an aggressive bunch because in 1932 there was actually an emu war. I oh, know. I want to tell you the tale. Number 22. Ooh. All right. Okay. I think we're <laughs> going to need some context on that emu war. That. What? A war on emus? <laughs> I love that. Shoot. I'm interested. I'm. Uh, yeah. Talk about interest peaked. Mm. Yeah. That's peaking interest wow. right there. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. The whole part about eating kangaroo. I didn't know that. But it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I mean if there's eat, a lot of kangaroos there. We eat deer. We, we, yeah. Yeah, we do. We do. And so. I, I, anybody who's watching this who's eating kangaroo, comment below, like, what's it taste like? Yeah. Is it any good? Would you prefer it instead of beef or lamb? Yeah. Let's know. I, 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 I feel, like, very gamey. It has to it, be. It has to be. So. Especially if you shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> The Great Emu War began because of the influx of emus throughout Western Oz. Oh, we Flocks of the six-foot-tall bird would destroy masses of farming crops and land in a brutal attack on resources and supply lines. Oh. Actually, it was more because they were hungry and they were there, but still, who knows what's going on in those nefarious bird brains. Number 23. <laughs> okay, so we have Got some it. context now. It was like... Uh, if you, you, and you may notice this in a few of our earlier videos. We recorded them here oh, yeah. with the big... 17 years cicada um, thing that when that wild. happened. You, you notice in some of our earlier videos, he had this all yep. in the background yep. of them. Yeah, that was, that and was wild. It was wild. And, and just, you know, how some of them would just fly right into your fucking face. Yep, I, I, I do not miss that. I don't miss that at all. Oh, what's, God. what's the next one? That's going to come. Uh, 17. Let me do some math here. 2038? Cool. Am I getting that right? Maybe. Uh, I man. don't math right now, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's probably nothing compared to what the animals are in Australia. Yeah, no. So uh, we can't complain too, too <laughs> I, I, I'd Give me a cicada any day over a fucking emu. Yeah, or a wallaby. Yeah. To combat the problem, ex-World War One soldiers were hired in the war against emus armed with guns. However, this didn't work, and the farmers requested more assistance from the soldiers but were denied. Eventually, bounties were put on emus' heads, and this seemed to work as over 57,000 bounties were claimed in total. Wow. Number 24. There's also some pretty scary, creepy crawlies, in particular, sorry, arachnophobes, but spiders. Dun dun dun. Oh. There's over 1,500 species of spiders throughout the country, and some of them have pretty gross venom. Mm. Number 25. Two of the deadliest spiders in the world can be found in Australia. Oh, nice. The red back spider and the Sydney funnel web spider are among the most poisonous and aggressive spiders in the world. Of course they're Ooh. aggressive. Number 26. You'd think with that kind of thing going on, the death toll for these things would be huge, right? Well, no, actually. In fact, apart from one case in 2016, nobody has died thanks to an arachnid in over 40 years in Australia. Wow. 40 years? Wow. Number 27. 
In fact, horses and cows are actually more likely to kill you over there, with them being responsible for over 100 deaths in the past 10 years. So what? be afraid of these guys. Be very afraid. Look at the blood in their eyes. I mean, look. Makes sense. The, the saying is that, you know, there's a low chance of horses and cows killing you, but it's never zero. Never zero. Mm -mm. <laughs> it makes sense, though, because if you're talking about, like, scarcely populated interior of a, of a continent, um, they probably use horses on ranches and stuff. Probably. And accidents happen, so that yeah. makes sense. And you're not near a hospital. Yeah, yeah, the closest one is probably 100 kilometers well, away. Maybe or more. Yeah. God. Number 28. That being said, however, Australia does have an awful lot of snakes in it, making it a place that Indiana Jones probably doesn't want to visit anytime soon. There is, in total, 140 different species of snake lurking in Australia. Number 29. Particular little slippery arseholes to look out for include the eastern brown snakes, which are responsible for the most snake deaths out of any of them. Oh. It's also rated second in the world in terms of toxicity. Ooh. Oh. Number 30. Yes, yes, snakes are scary, and yes, that one, you know, is, is killy. But actually, though, it's not quite as bad as you think. While, yes, snakes can kill, between 2010 and 2016, only 35 people died due to snakes nibbling on them. Number 31. Once again, something else is more dangerous than snakes that you may not first think of. Bees and wasps! Mm. Almost 42,000 admissions to hospital between 2000 and 2013 were down to these bumbling bastards and anaphylactic shocks. Wow. Oh, they're so evil. Look at them. Number 32. In fact, even more than bees, you should be scared of thunderstorms. In November of 2016, rising temperatures in Melbourne started a thunderstorm, which in turn caused a mass thunderstorm asthma event. Mm. Number 33. Over 8,000 people were admitted to hospital because of the thunderstorm, and over 9 people died due to asthma. This kind of thunderstorm has happened five times in Australia's history. Wait, what? Asthma? Asthma? Sneezing too much? From thunderstorms? There's gotta be something lost in translation here. Wait, asthma from a thunderstorm? Like, like maybe air quality? Yeah. Fucks with you? I mean, I don't know. it's a spacious that's, area. So... That's wild. Huh. Weird, man. It's weird. Number 34. Also, be careful of koala bears, too, because, well, it's not as bad as death, yes, but you can get chlamydia from them, and no, not in the means you're thinking of, and frankly, if you're thinking of that, you deserve to get it in that way, too. You can yeah. actually get koala bear chlamydia if you get exposed to the infected creature's urine. Uh... Number 35. Australia is 14 hours ahead of the US and seasons are, to us in Europe and the States, all the wrong way round too. Summer is December to February, autumn or fall is March to May, winter is June to August, and spring is September to November. Ooh, that part's gonna mess uh, with my head. So Our winter is their summer. Yeah, so if we want to get... So if we're gonna travel to Australia, then it would need to be... In the winter. Around Christmas time. No, it would be... Uh, depends what you want to get down there. Yeah. If you yeah. want to go when it's fucking hot, uh, yeah. Yeah, go in Christmas go now. time. Yeah. Which is why that Tim Minton song, White Wine in the Sun, was a technically a Christmas song. Yes. So. Yes, it was. Yeah, and, and we recorded it, what, in March of last year? Yeah, and I think so. Then didn't release it till December. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Number 36. This means Christmas is in summertime for Australia, <laughs> but there aren't really any massive differences into how it's celebrated. Santa might have to wear a mankini when he goes down there, though. <laughs> However, for Christmas dinner instead of turkey, Aussies apparently eat prawns and lots of them. Oh. Number 30. Shrimp. Shrimp tacos. That shrimp. sounds delicious. Actual sh uh, prawns off the Barbie for yes. Christmas dinner. I'm down. Sign me up. Yep. Seven. It was reported by the University of Sydney that at Bondi Beach in Sydney, 40,000 people visited the beach on Christmas Day. Oh man, imagine that. That sounds good, but sand in all the presents. <laughs> Number 38. In fact, in a record only they could probably ever win, Australia won the world record for the most number of surfing Santas at any one time. If you want to try and beat yeah. that record, by the way, it's 320 Santas you need, just in case you want to try it in, I don't know, Felix though? Nah. Number 39. 
It's a slight cliche, yes, but Aussies love alcohol. Around 1.35 trillion bottles of wine are produced by the country, and in 2012, it was estimated that Australians spend over 14.1 billion Australian dollars each year on alcohol. No, not individually, by the way, as a collective. <laughs> well, maybe some of them. <laughs> Number 40. In fact, former Prime Minister Bob Hawke was actually in the Guinness Book of World Records in 1954 in his academia days for beer guzzling. He managed to slurp down 2.5 pints of beer in 11 seconds. Wow. 11 seconds? We like to drink with Bob, because Bob is our mate. <laughs> Sorry, I just realised only a certain age of people in Britain will understand what I just did there. My bad. Number four. Wow. Nah, that's I, impressive. Nah, that's impressive and kind of desirable. The, the last president we had that actually drank alcohol was Obama. Obama did, Bush did, Clinton did, but neither Trump or Biden drink alcohol. It'd probably be more accepted if they did, though. Yeah, yeah. maybe. 41. They loved to drink so much that in 1965, Thomas Angro from South Australia invented the wine cask, aka wine in a box, which can hold up to one gallon of wine. Hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait hold, a minute. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's uh, pause it for a second. The Aussies invented box boxed wine? wine? Wow, okay. Wow. Very nice. That's, I mean, that's popular in, you Very know, nice. where I grew up and yeah. for... You know, young college kids that are yep. trying to get uh, get their buzz on in a cheap yep. manner. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Of wine. The meaning of life. According to worldatlas.com, obesity is a little bit of an issue in Australia. It's ranked as the 26th most obese country in the world, with 29.9% of the country being overweight. Huh. I thought kangaroo was meant to be leaner and better for you. Hmm. I mean, they're still not as big as uh, Americans are Definitely per capita. They, they still, you're still not that bad. <laughs> no. Number 43. Those furry boots that make you sound like a caveman that were a hit about five years ago, Ugg boots, originate from Australia. They were given the name after the creator's wife told them they were ugly, apparently. <laughs> Number 44. The first supposed recorded sighting of the country was by the Dutch in 1606. Dutch navigator Wilhelm Janszoon sailed to meet with the Aborigines. The Dutch charted and mapped the whole of the western and northern coastline and named the continent New Holland. But they had no intention of settling. Hmm. Bit like my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Number 45. According to historian Gavin Menzies, the Chinese, led by Admiral Zheng, had already beaten them to it in around 1420. <laughs> wow. Number 46. Hmm. Clearly not happy letting the Dutch and the Chinese have all the fun, Captain James Cook of England then sailed over in 1770. He mapped the East Coast, which he named New South Wales, and claimed it for the British Empire. What can I say, we were greedy back then. <laughs> Number 47. The British government then sent ships to New South Wales. See, look at them go, wee! When they settled, well, they probably put the kettle on first, but then after that, a flag was raised on Sydney Cove on the 26th of January, 1788. Number 48. In case you recognise the date of the 26th of January, Australians, it's Ellen DeGeneres' birthday, but also the country's National Australia Day. Number 49. The indigenous population was between 75,000 and 1 million in 1788, but began to decline over 150 years following the settlement. Many died because of disease, but many were also killed in conflict with the new settlers. Mm. Number 50. The British used to send their convicts and felons all the way over to Australia to prevent overcrowding in British prisons. However, you didn't really have to do all that much to warrant the penalty of being sent to the New World. Petty crimes like stealing used to get you killed, but instead they just relocated you to the other side of the world. What? Oh my god. What a punishment! To, to get away from the shitty weather and the shitty food, and to go have the Great Barrier Reef and... You know, lobsters the size of canoes. And every imaginable poisonous animal. Yeah, yeah there's a trade-off there. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, give me sun and death any day. Give me sun and death? And sun and death. Sun and death. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, as yeah. opposed to Brit you Brit you Britain, you know we love you, but I don't know, man. Australia... Seems a little more fun. Yep. More interesting. Yep. At least you know everything is... At least you know what 
or that, everything is trying to erase you. Yeah, yeah. And you, it, and you live within that. Yeah, it keeps you on your toes. Yeah. It makes the day interesting. Yep. <laughs> oh, my God. Number 51. More horrible crimes, like, you know, vicious murder, would still be punishable by death. So actually, it was mainly people like thieves and people who had damaged property who would be sent there rather than the worst of the worst. Like, why are we showing a picture of Suicide Squad? They're not even that bad. Number 52. The prisoners were sent in hulks. No, not that one, and also in, ew. Hulks were huge transportation ships. 300 convicts could be crammed inside the 65 meter long boat for the four month journey. Wow. Many people on board died because of diseases such as typhoid and cholera, and there was probably very poor on board entertainment. Mm. It, it reminds me of a, uh, one of the Irish tunes that a lot of local Irish bands play called Back Home in Derry. It t- tells of a tale of being at sea as a prisoner, is saying, and in, in the chorus is, I wish I was back home in Derry. It's very morbid stuff, man. Huh. So, Well, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I get that. I, yeah. Four months. Damn. Yeah, that's a long freaking yep. time. Number 53. In all, around 164,000 convicts were sent to Australia between 1788 and 1868. Number 54. On an unrelated note, in 1851, Australia had a gold rush and went gold crazy. This began by Edward Hargraves discovering a grain of gold in a watering hole near Bathurst. This brought many immigrants from all over the world hoping to cash in on the gold. There's now about a million websites that do that for you, so you're only, what, 166 years late? Damn. Number 55. They have a lot of longest evers in Oz. For example, Australia has the longest railway track at 480 kilometres, the longest ever road at 146 kilometres, and the longest ever fence that runs for 5,400 kilometres starting at Queensland to South Australia. Wow. Number 56. The country has a very long sporting history, but does not officially have a national sport. The most popular are cricket, rugby league, and Australian rules football. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Number 57. Well past Sam from a few seconds ago, Australian rules football, also known as Australian football, dates back to the 19th century and looks very similar to rugby, but they can pick up the ball. No, I don't understand it either. Mind you, I'd barely understand soccer at the best of times anyway. Yeah, I remember us checking that out. Yeah. It sounds like a really fun sport. <coughs> Just a combination of the, takes the best parts of every single stick it ball sport and puts it together. Yep. Ser- seriously cool. Number 58. The Ashes are a test cricket series that is exclusively played between England and Australia and is a topic that will surely start an argument with any man from either country over the age of 50. The first commenced in 1883 and so far total wins are a draw with each country winning 32 series each. Number 59. The urn, the trophy of the Ashes, contains the ashes of a cricket bale, not a dead relative or anything. That would be awful. It was speculated for many years, though, that it was the ashes of Lord Darnley's mother-in-law, which makes the whole sport a hell of a lot weirder if they were playing for dead women's remains. Number 60. The Australian box jellyfish is known as the world's most venomous marine animal known to mankind. A touch of its tentacles can make a human experience cardiac arrest within minutes, a bit like me with women. (laughs) Number 61. They also have the world's happiest animal, the quokka. Oh. They are descendants of wallabies and koalas known as marsupials. And they're also the size of a domestic cat, and they're also so cute. I mean, look at it. Number 62. Australia seems to love poker. The country is home to 20% of the world's poker machines, and across 2003 and 4, gamblers lost 16.21 billion Aussie dollars. Number 63. We owe great thanks to the country for many, many things, including the word selfie. The word first appeared in an online ABC, that's Australian Broadcasting Corporation, forum post, where a drunk user uploaded a self-portrait, also known as a (laughs) self-e. Nintendo 64. The word was named International Word of the Year 2013 by Oxford Dictionaries, and in 2016, 24 billion selfies were uploaded to Google. Wow, we are a vain bunch, aren't we? Thanks, Aussies, for pointing that out. Number 65. Bushfires and forest fires are very common in the country because of the heat, but some of the trees can actually explode. 
Eucalyptus trees produce flammable oil, so when there's a forest fire, then boom goes the diner! Wow. A uh, tree. <laughs> Number 66. Six. In 1975, the country's government got into a budget squabble to the point the government couldn't be funded anymore. The Queen, or rather the Queen's official representative, Sir John Kerr, resolved this government shutdown by just firing the Prime Minister outright. Number 67. This new Prime Minister essentially dismissed every single person from Parliament too, meaning there were new elections and it was basically the political equivalent of a reset switch. That's what you get when you mess with Queen Liz. <laughs> Should be said, by the way, government has never shut down again since. Wow. R.I.P. Yeah. Yeah, definitely dates the video here. Wow. But that's the, just start all they, over. I didn't know they just, this. all right, let's just uh, blow on the cartridge, insert it, and start again. Let's try this again. <laughs> yeah, wow. Number 68. Green ants can also be found in Australia, as well as in a surprising amount of stuff too. They're used as an ingredient to accompany things like lemonade and goat's cheese. A new gin is even being launched this year, which includes green ants as the main ingredients. Yummy. Green ants? Ants, like insects. Insects. Huh. Ugh. Interesting. Wow. It's been said in the future that we're all going to be eating insect loaves for protein. Maybe they're ahead of the curve on this Maybe. one. Number 69. Nice. Rather stereotypically, Crocodile Dundee is Australia's highest grossing film at 47 million Australian dollars. This is more than double Australian mega smash Mad Max Fury Road, which garnered 21 million Aussie dollars. Wow. Number 70. Rather vainly, the second highest grossing film ever is the Hugh Jackman drama named Australia. Babe is third. Oh, babe. babe? That'll do, pig. That, that's an Australian babe film? Is Australian? Huh. What? Huh. Interesting. Wow, okay. All right, then. Cool. Number 71. The best-selling single in Australia, however, isn't babe-like at all. It is, instead, LMFAO's understated and subtle masterpiece party rock anthem at over one million sales across the country. Number 72. This is closely followed by Candle in the Wind 1987 by Elton John, the song he re-released and sang specifically for Princess Diana after she died. Wow, that got beaten by Party Rockin' in the House tonight. Princess Di is probably shuffling in her grave. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't <laughs> That might be too harsh. Number 73. Australia is known for being quite strict in terms of censorship in movies, TV, and video games. Several video games have actually been completely banned outright in Australia, including Hotline Miami 2, Wrong Number, Leisure Suit Larry, Magna Cum Loud, and Manhunt. Number 74. Huh. One such title that was partially censored was South Park The Stick of Truth, which was banned because of a particular scene involving... Well, there's no other way to say it. Anal probing. <laughs> it was instead replaced with this image of a koala crying, because of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> they came for your show, man! How does that make you oh feel? Oh my god! Uh, makes sense. I mean, that, that's the way. That's if if Australia's gonna censor something, that's how I want it to be censored. <laughs> With a koala. With a koala crying. Yes. Yep. There you go. It made made it made something good out yep. of it. Come on. Number seventy-five. Let me tell you a little story. One morning in 1967, the then Prime Minister Harold Holt went to Cheviot Beach in Victoria. Holt decided to go swimming despite the heavy tide because why not? Well, here's why not. He then completely disappeared out of view without a sound or a trace. Number 76. Whoa! That would never happen in America. There would be way too much security to just let him I, drift off to sea like that. He just disappeared. Yeah. Uh, uh, I hope wow. he wasn't a popular prime minister because wow. that would have sucked. My God, man. <sighs> or a trace. Number 76. There was a range of wild theories about what happened to Holt. Some thought a shark attack, some thought a CIA assassination, some even thought Chinese submarines got to him. Number 77. Eventually, though, 40 years later, authorities have concluded he simply drowned, and his body was never found. Hmm, maybe that's something for all-time Connies to tackle at some point. Damn, see, you scary. Number 78. By the way, in case you're wondering how many beaches there are, the University of Sydney counted 10,685 beaches throughout the country. Got 10,685 problems, but a beach ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> Number 79. 
The fish industry is now a multi-billion dollar business in Australia. It's clearly a big part of their diet. In fact, they consume around 16 kilograms per person of fish each year. Wow. Number two. That's a lot. That is a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to take a wild guess that most of the population lives near the sea. So I would assume that most of them have a hiker in for some good ass seafood. Yeah. I mean, it's fresh. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, and it's in a, an area of the world where it's got some good offerings, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming. I don't know. The Christmas Islands can get a bit nippy. And no, I don't mean the weather, lol. I mean the crabs. There are 120 million red crabs living in the forest who then walk back into the sea for wet season. Number 81. Whoa, 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 whoa. They walk up on the land. And into then the go trees. back into the water. Yeah. Woo-wee. That's kind of that's kind of intense. Yeah, yeah. Kind of intense. I mean, if, if you know, you know about yeah. us being Marylanders. Gl- glad that those, you know, Chesapeake uh, blue crabs don't do, don't climb up onto the uh, onto the land. No, no, we're good battling them at sea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Before it was named Melbourne, Melbourne was shortly called Batmania. This isn't just because they love bats, although I don't know if they do, but it was actually named this after one of its founders and a man with, frankly, the coolest name ever, John Batman. Yes! Ah. Number eight. (laughs) Wow, that's awesome! Wow, I didn't know Bruce Wayne uh, was... They actually uh, had a Batman. Yeah. Good for them. Good for them. That's really nice. Number 82. Batmania... Oh, fine, I'll call it Melbourne. It's actually quite a progressive place, apparently. For instance, it started Australia's first gay and lesbian radio in 1993 called Joy Radio. Nice. Number 83. If you want to know some hot Australian words, well, here are some. Cotton candy, or candy floss as we call it in the UK, is known as fairy floss in Australia. They also call all other sweets, or candy as you Americans call it, lollies. Number 84. Huh. Rather confusingly, too, flip-flops over there are called thongs. That's just a mistake waiting to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Number 84. Well, that's that's a slang that we missed in that whole 50 yeah. words one. Uh. Flip-flops are thongs. Wow. Five. The hottest temperature ever recorded in the Oz was 50.7 degrees Celsius. That's 123.3 Fahrenheit, wow. by the way. The lowest was minus 23 degrees, which is minus 9.4 Fahrenheit, also known as the temperature where your nipples become lethal weapons. (laughs) Yep. Number 86. There is a myth that the word kangaroo comes from the Gugu Yamathir, an Aboriginal language, phrase for I don't understand you. It said when Captain Cook was exploring the land, he asked natives what the animal was called. They replied kangaroo, also known as I don't understand you, which he then thought was the name of the animal. <laughs> what a yeah. great story. Awesome. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was debunked in 1970. Mm. Number 87. Pom or Pommy is Aussie slang for English or sometimes British people. So a hello from Pommy Island. It apparently originates from being short for pomegranate, which in itself is rhyming slang for immigrant. Oh, come on, guys. That doesn't even remotely rhyme. What about, you know, immigrant? Yeah, no, I can't think of anything now, but there are better ones out there, surely. Has to be. Number 88. The country is home to many innovators and inventors, as well as spiders and crabs, so that's nice. The black box on aeroplanes was invented by Dr. David Warren of Australia. The notepad was invented by J.A. Birchall, also of Australia. And the dual flush toilet by Bruce Thompson of Australia. Number 89. Oh, cool. so that was invented by an Australian. And the, they don't flush up. The notepad? The notepad? Wow, you guys got the notepad? Cool. Wow. And boxed wine. Yeah. Pretty cool, man. <laughs> All right. Actually, in 1856, Victoria and South Australia were the first to introduce the secret ballot, the idea of voting in secret little booths which are considerably more secure. This spread to Europe, the UK, and the US by 1884, so woo! Privacy and democracy. Yay! Number 90. Anzac Day is a national anniversary for the first military action of Australia and New Zealander troops in World War I. It's on the 25th of April, by the way, in case you want to pop that down in your diary. Number 91. Boomerangs were invented and used as a weapon by the Aborigines. Yep, you're welcome, Digger Harkness. The boomerangs were used for hunting, so if your projectile missed, it would zip right back your way anyway. Number 92. 
The sweet, somber and, um, funky sound of the didgeridoo is also another invention by the Aboriginals. Nobody quite knows where it came from, but depending on who's looking at it, it can have up to 14 different names. That, those last two, those are another pair of things that when Americans think of Australians, we think of the boomerang and the didgeridoo. Yep. Yeah. Number 93. Traditionally, only men can play the instrument at ceremonial occasions, though there are some women didgeridooers who play it informally. Those rebels crushing the patriarchy one didgeridoo at a time. Number 94. The dream time is the aboriginal belief of the creation of life. Aborigines call the beginning of time the dreaming and believe that their ancestors rose from the ground and formed parts of nature like water, animals and the sky. Wow, well done those ancestors. I mean, look at it. It looks great. Well, good job, guys. Nice. Number 95. Whales, the animal, not the country, were an important totem for certain groups of Aboriginal people. They considered them a holy resource, and they used their fat to make utensils and bones to make weapons. Number 96. Like kangaroo, the names dingo, koala, and wombat all originate from the Aboriginal language too. Cool. Number 97. The Aboriginals are also an artistic bunch too. Caves were decorated with bright Aboriginal art, which forms images with small dots and carving, telling stories of their families and moments in time. And they're very pretty, aren't they? Number 98. Even though the British adverts for it clearly state that Foster's Lager is enjoyed throughout Australia, it, um, isn't. They actually prefer stuff like Victoria Bitter. That's right, Britain. We've been sold a lie. Mm, so Number we. 99. Yeah, so have Americans. So have we. Yes, that Long is... Long time. That is, uh... And there's just higher quality beer yep. than Foster's. Yep. I, I, when I, I, I don't know if I told you on cam, uh, camera. I told <coughs> you already in, in private. But when I turned 21, I was working an overnight job in a local grocery store that sold alcohol. And my the first legal beer I ever bought was a can of Foster's. And I, I, I bought it at like 7 a.m. when I got off. I drank it, I went to bed, woke up with the worst hangover. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Don't recommend it. <laughs> Despite its peaky bits I was talking about earlier, and no, I'm not talking about the hard nipples again, it's the lowest and flattest country in the world. The lowest point is Lake Eyre, 15 miles beneath sea level, and their highest is Mount Kossi Costco. Number 100. Pretty stones known as opals that really do look like what imagined infinity stones look like in real life primarily come from Australia. In fact, 95% of them wow. do. Wow. Number 101! Well done for making it this far in the video if you're from Australia. Not because of the content, I mean. That's high quality. But I mean because of the internet. Australia, apparently, is very well known for having very, very poor internet connection speeds. Mm. They're ranked 51st in the world when it comes wow. to internet speed, Ugh. with a rate of 8.5 megabytes per second. To be fair, when outside looks like this, why do you need the internet? I know exactly. why, to listen to pommies like me talking all over things. Ha <laughs> ha, M bored. All right, so if viewership is down this week because of Australia week, we know what to blame. They have terrible internet. <laughs> oh my god. And cheers to all of you guys for making it this far for, with us. Yes. Holy Two crap. thumbs up, not only to 101 Hot Facts, but also to all of you for making yeah. it through this video. Um, what do they miss? Let us know. What's inaccurate? Yeah. What's accurate? What do you have to add? We don't know. Y'all do. Put yeah. it in the comments. <laughs> yep. Thanks and thanks to for those comments, liking, subscribing, hitting that bell, and sharing with your friends. Definitely, guys. Till next time, wash your hands, scrub your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, embrace the suck. Unplug and do something epic. See y'all next time. Later, guys. Fellas, we could be that mistake. Let's do this.